Hello, today we are in the home of Edith and Mo Goldman. In honor of their 50th anniversary, we are interviewing them so they can tell you how it all began. And here we have Edith and Mo. Honey, <laughs> customer as you are, go ahead, speak a little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll tell you how we met. I lived on 110 Devon Street, and she lived on 107 Devon Street. Then I moved away. And then I came back. We used to play ball in the middle of the street or in a little field. Uh, I forget the name of the field. Ceylon. No, Ceylon was the other one. Oh. Anyway, we used to play hit the ball on Sunday mornings. I happened to know Edith's father from, uh, from Boston, where I used to work. He used mm -hmm. to come in with his brother and buy stuff in my place. I worked in the wholesale district on Portland Street. Unbeknownst to me, I looked up on the porch one day at 107 Devon Street, and there was this beautiful young lady with black hair, and uh, I threw the ball up on the porch, and she threw it down. And that was the beginning of a romance. I think I was about 19, just about 19 years old. And then my gang used to hang around the corner. So I used to borrow my brother's car and I'd park around the back. And she'd come down the back stairs and meet me on Laredo Street so the guys wouldn't razz me. And we went, used to go out on a date. The night before I enlisted in the service, we were out on a date and we were watching uh, Churchill give a big speech about uh, Hitler uh, running all over. No, no, Pearl Harbor. That was Pearl Harbor, bombing of Pearl Harbor. Oh, whatever. Yeah. I didn't like my job. I was making $8 <laughs> a week, and the guy was working me like a horse. I was unloading alcohol, 16-ounce bottles of alcohol, a dozen in a pack from a trailer, and I was going on my date on a Saturday night, and he said to me, uh, hey, where are you going? I said, I'm going on a date. I've been working all day. He says, you can't go until the work is done. I said, don't tell me when I can't go. I got a date. I'll see you later. And I quit my job. And uh, then that Monday morning, following Monday, my brother drove me down to the Air Corps Recruiting Center on Columbus Avenue next to the Harold Traveler Garage, and I enlisted in the United States Air Force. Now, would you say a few million words, please? <laughs> yes, and uh, we were at a party the night before, the right? night before, right. We were at a party, and we were all huddled around the radio because nobody had... TVs. There was no such thing as a TV. And uh, the party turned into a disaster because everybody became very anxious and worried of what was going to be and what was going to happen. And uh, like yeah, most uh, Grandpa said, he was one of the first to go. It was the 29th of December. When 1941. Yeah. But he was. Gonzo. And they ran a street party for me there, mm -hmm. uh, and they put up a plaque <laughs> with all the kids that left for the war, you know? All the was, boys that were in service. Yeah. And that's that where the, you see that picture of Edie Hope the gun? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This fellow was a World War I, the janitor of where I used to live. His name was White, Mr. White. He was a World War I uh, veteran, mm -hmm. and he belonged to the... Uh, American Legion, you know, and all that, and he was a gung-ho, and all the kids went. And uh, then one by one, all his friends enlisted, some were drafted, and uh, we were in a war. He was away for two and a half years, all over the United States, and uh, then we decided to get married and he was at the port of embarkation and... I came back from Columbia, South Carolina to get married. Yes, yeah, but you were at the port of embarkation. Oh yeah, I was ready to go. He had a great wedding. My father accused Edie of marrying me for the $10,000 GI insurance that I was going to get when he knocked me off. <laughs> My father was a redhead with a great temper there. Then we got married in Rabbi Jacobson's vestibule there on uh, on Intervale Street, and it was a rainy, rainy day. Everybody was crying, and it was raining. I don't know which came first, the rain or the crying. A rainy Wednesday night. Yeah, right? yeah. 
Nobody opposed the marriage, but they uh, kind of shook up that we were getting married during the uh, war. So, what are you going to do? And then before you knew it, you had to go, go back. Go back, right, right, right. And then they shipped you out. They shipped you overseas. Those days were very, very trying. You couldn't get butter. You couldn't get sugar. You couldn't get nylons. There were so many things that you couldn't get because of the war. And people would stand in line for hours and hours. And everything was rationed. And you had coupons in, to be able to attain, obtain these things. And um, we, Auntie Jeanette and I, uh, we worked for this food chain. And so we were able to get everything. And everybody would ask us to get everything for them. And we did most of the time. Um, I had a customer that was very nice because I used to give him sugar and butter and everything that he couldn't get and he was a buyer in Vanity Fair in, in Feline's basement so he used to bring me nylons and everything made in all beautiful lingerie uh, that you know you really couldn't get at the time and uh, it was not easy it wasn't easy during the days of the war and thank God, God had been good. He watched over him, brought him back. And I won the war personally. When he came back, we, we were married at the time. So uh, we decided to uh, look for a place, and places were very difficult to come by. You couldn't buy a house. You couldn't buy anything if you didn't have any money. Luckily, I was one that knew how to save a buck. and. Uh, and we went into housekeeping. Where did we? Uh, 80 Lucerne Street. Eight, eight, that's right. We lived on 80 Lucerne Street. And then. Before, before that, we lived with my father and mother on Calendar Street, didn't we? Yeah, not too long. No. Before we knew it, things got back to normal. And we started to raise a family. And first came a beautiful Linda in 1947. And then four years later came. Our beautiful son Bruce, 1951, and uh, here we are 50 years later. And that's the story of my life. And God <laughs> gives us strength, we'll be here for a couple of more years. A few more. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And I must tell you, I am the top salesman Demo. Demo. in Costco. Demo. <laughs> tell him how you got it. Well, I won a contest by submitting a name for all the demos uh, all over the country. And there were, uh, I was the only one on the East Coast. The name is Table Talk. And boy, can I talk. <laughs> I'm still looking forward to hitting the lottery. We'll make everybody rich, including me. <laughs> That's it. What, I think I burned my knishes? Oh, there you go. Be careful because they're very hot. Very hot. hot be careful. We've had, there has been the good and there's been the bad. There have been times that that uh, we didn't have too much, and but we made the best of everything we did have. And that's what's different from the years ago and today. People knew how to value a dollar and how to live and make the best of everything. Today, everybody wants the best, but doesn't want to help make it. And uh, I think that uh, when you get things the hard way, you really know how to appreciate life. I and the soft way there. No, <laughs> no, hard way. And okay. that's what, what's happened to both of us. We did everything the hard way. Never, nothing ever came easy, but grateful to God that whatever we have and whatever we've done it's been well appreciated and uh, if he gives us a few more years we'll be ever grateful again only one thing I ask you Lord I want to hit the lottery that's it <laughs> <laughs>